most docile looking dragon I've ever seen. So uh, last morning in Prague, last half day in Prague rather I should say, I was going to go and see David Cherney's The Brown Noses this morning but checked it the other day and it was closed temporarily. It's an uh, interesting sculpture though, you can probably tell by the name. You can climb a ladder, there's uh, two large sculptures bending over, you can peek in through particular orifice as you probably guess what from the name but the uh when you peek through apparently there's a video playing of two czech politicians feeding each other it's supposed to be a commentary on the uh state of czech politics instead i thought i'll have a little wander up to the prague castle what is the area we know as prague city now it was originally initially settled by celtic tribes the boy tribe i think that's how you pronounce it and then later on, 13th to 15th centuries, the uh, Slavic tribes moved in. In 1968, the Prague Spring, which probably most of you have heard of, aware of, took place under the Communist Party leader, Dubček. He was then overthrown later that year by the Soviet forces and other Warsaw Pact countries. And then the uh, Plastic People Universe band was formed, named after Frank Zappa song, heavily influenced by Fran Frank Zappa, because he was kind of anti-establishment, anti-authoritarian, etc. And also uh, kind of abstract music. Then they ran into trouble with the local law. Partially in answer to that, what was called the Charter 77, was drafted by a group of people, one of them being Václav Havel, who would later become the first president of the newly formed Czech Republic after the Czechoslovakia was dissolved in the early 90s. Charter 77 was essentially a petition in response to the occupying force at that point, the public government, and how they weren't adhering to the several treaties they'd signed up to, including the Helsinki Accords of 1975 on sort of basic human rights, civil liberties. From there it obviously sort of snowballed and then eventually the uh, Soviet regime would collapse and then the Czech Republic would be formed. Individuals, parties who signed up to the Charter 77 were sort of harassed as you'd expect detained and arrested initially but kept going and the intention wasn't really to get rid of the current government but rather just ensuring basic human rights. A little bit further over past the castle. The square that changed its name just a couple of years ago by petition and the square was named Boris Nemtsov Square after the opposition member, I think he was originally governor of Nizhny Novgorod in Russia and became sub opposition member against Putin, who then was assassinated I think in 2015 in the shadow of the Kremlin. So they renamed the square after him. But this square just happened to be the place where the Russian embassy was actually based. And you can imagine they weren't too happy about this. I think they've moved the embassy now, but claim that it wasn't anything to do with the renaming of the square. It kind of a two fingers from the citizens of Prague to the then and still current Russian government. His wife was actually in attendance when the unveiling of the renaming of the square occurred. A nice uh, press and parade by St. Vitus Cathedral. So St. Vitus Cathedral has been, has been constructed over many centuries from the 14th century. I think it was only completed in, in 1920s. Do you want to say 1928 off the top of my head? But 1920s. So it's a mishmash of different architectural styles. Gothic, um, you've got the Baroque tower I think on the side, you can see the green copper roof there, spire on top. 
you come round here, you get a great view of over the old town of Prague. First president of Czechoslovakia, 1918 onwards. It was formed just after World War One. Tomasz Masaryk. His name everywhere and statues and squares, streets, etc. throughout all the different cities, towns and Czech Republic. Seems to be uh, rather revered in the country. It's the uh, Zizhkov Tower right over there again. So it was the Teen church there, Church of Our Lady of Teen, which is a more modern part of the city over there, towers. Khrachani and Malashtarana stretches out. Great flying buttresses on the side. Golden Lane there. You got to you can only get in with a ticket. I don't know why. For some reason, walk around all like the other parts of the complex. But the shops down there. So you think it'd be open. I actually went down it last time I was here without any tickets, so maybe certain times it's just open. It's actually a golden lane where Franz Kafka lived down. Still see his little house there. It's probably the best view you get, not the front but the side. I think this is the Baroque Tower here. Again all the flying buttresses. Support the walls. See the more modern parts of it. Charles IV had the castle rebuilt in the Gothic style in the 14th century and strengthened the fortifications of the castle itself. The castle is about 1870 feet in length, begun in 1870, and St. Vitus Cathedral was founded under Vratislav I and the son St. Venceslas in the first half of the 10th century. Getting a cheapo uh, look inside. Usually, I think you can't get anywhere near it unless you get here early. I think I came up to it this close. Just reading the Third oldest astronomical clock in the world, from the oldest still operating. It was 1416 off the top head, 1416, it's been 1435 when it was first made. Still in operation. Though it did get destroyed in May 1945, or badly damaged rather, by the, in the uprising. Nazis tried to suppress it, got badly burnt out. Doorway here, to see how short people used to be. See the figures that come out on the hour. 